After getting a big win in MSG against the Knicks, the Thunder reached the 52-win mark and clinched a playoff spot. This is the first time the Thunder have been in the playoffs since 2020, and the first time OKC will have home court since the 2019 season. Many parallels have been made between this 2023-2024 Thunder team and the first ever Thunder team to make the playoffs in 2009, when a young Thunder team took on Kobe Bryant and the eventual NBA champion Los Angeles Lakers. But what exactly do the 23-24 Thunder and that first playoff team have in common? Here are 10 similarities I found between the 2009 team and this year's team. Number 10, All-Star Weekend Snubs. In back-to-back -back seasons, Isaiah Joe has been snubbed from the NBA's annual three-point contest during All-Star Weekend. Last season, the likes of Julius Randle were selected over Isaiah Joe, who at the time of the contest was shooting the highest percentage from three of qualified players. Surely the NBA would rectify this mistake, right? Wrong. Yet again, Joe was snubbed in the entire field that was selected for the three-point contest. All are currently shooting a lower percentage this season than Isaiah Joe from deep. In 2009, the NBA had the bright idea to leave the fourth and final spot in the Sprite NBA dunk contest up to a fan vote. With Dwight Howard, Nate Robinson, and Rudy Gay already set, the fans would be choosing between Joe Alexander, Rudy Fernandez, and Russell Westbrook. For those of you who are dunk contest historians, that is right, we were robbed of Russell Westbrook competing in the Superman Dwight Howard versus Crypto Nate Robinson dunk contest. Alexander Fernandez and Westbrook, as part of the fan vote, made sort of tryout videos where they campaigned on why they were worthy of receiving votes from the fans to join the dunk contest. Ultimately, Rudy Fernandez was selected with the fourth and final spot, and Thunder fans and NBA fans were forever robbed of seeing Russell Westbrook and what he could do in a dunk contest. Number nine, do it all three and D wings. In his more than 15 years as the brain behind the operation of the Thunder, Sam Presti has shown that he has a type when it comes to his starting shooting guards. The first really star in that mold was Tabo Cephalosha. Before he was playing in air maxes for the Hawks, Tabo was one of the premier perimeter defenders in the NBA, holding his own against the likes of Kobe, LeBron, and more elite scores. Cephalosha in his first full season in OKC was named a second team all NBA defensive player and shot over 40 percent from three in two different seasons. Thabo, after his injury, the Thunder shuffled through the likes of Terrence Ferguson, Josh Hustis, Corey Brewer, and more before they found Lou Dort as the true successor to Cephalosha and Robertson. Lou Dort was a five-star high school prospect who played one year at Arizona State before entering the NBA as an undrafted free agent signing with the Oklahoma City Thunder. As one of the best developmental stories in the NBA, Lou worked and clawed his way out of the G League and onto the Thunder's main roster in 2020. Dort played so well that OKC ultimately converted him to a full NBA contract. Dort really broke out in the 2020 playoffs where he played seven games of unbelievable defense on James Harden in a season where the Beard was averaging over 34 points per game in the regular season. Now Dort has become one of the foundational pieces for this new iteration of the Thunder as an elite defensive stopper who guards stars at basically four different positions and has rapidly improved as a shooter and a decision maker this season, maximizing his role next to Shea, J-Dub, and Chet. Number 8. Extremely Skilled 7-Footers In 2016, before matching up with the Knicks, Kevin Durant referred to Kristaps Porzingis as a unicorn, citing that the unique skill set of a player who is able to shoot, make the right play, defend, and space to the three-point line, and block shots at 7 feet is almost as rare as finding a unicorn. Durant may have coined the name for Porzingis, but in many ways he was the original unicorn in NBA history as a 6'11 to 7-foot lanky killer shooter who could pass dribble, defend, and most of all, score at the level of the all-time greats, putting him in top-tier conversations in basketball history when it comes to getting buckets. KD became the prototype for a lot of thin, taller players who focus more on perimeter skills, ball handling, fluid guard-like movement, and outside shooting rather than being exiled to the low post to work on traditional back-to-the-basket game. Due to their similar frames, uncommon ball handling, and shooting at around 7 feet tall, there were obvious comparisons brought up between Kevin Durant and Chet Holmgren. KD is more of a perimeter player, whereas Chet this season has started every game this season for the Thunder at center and become one of the more impactful shot blockers in the NBA this season as a rookie. In many ways, Holmgren is an even more actualized version of the unicorn that Durant described than when he talked about Porzingis being a player who already, in his rookie class, is a top five rim protector, shooting 37% from three, anchoring an elite defense, flashes of rare ball handling at his size, and overall an incredibly high ceiling as a player with an extremely unique combination of skills and size. Number seven, first time NBA head coaches. In the Thunder's first season in OKC after relocating from Seattle, P.J. Carlissimo was the first person to ever have the title of head coach of the Oklahoma City Thunder. 
but not for long. Carlismo's tenure in OKC was short after coaching a full season in Seattle. Carlismo was fired by the Thunder after only 13 games in the 2008-2009 season. His replacement, Scott Brooks, a 10-year NBA veteran who was a member of the Rockets' 1994 title team. After his playing career, Brooks was an assistant for the Nuggets and Kings before he joined Carlismo's staff in 2007 and eventually replaced him. Brooks coached the Thunder for seven seasons where he won over 53% of his games, led by Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant before he was fired in 2015 and replaced by Billy Donovan. Before he was the lead man in Marky Mark and a Funky Thunder Bunch as the head coach, Mark Dagnall worked his way up the coaching ladder. Starting as a student manager at UConn in his freshman season of college, the Huskies went on to win a national championship with future NBA players Emeka Okafor and Ben Gordon leading the way. Dagnall was later hired as an assistant before eventually moving on to Florida to coach under Billy Donovan after Mark's three seasons with Holy Cross. At Florida, Dagnall worked more as an assistant to Donovan than an assistant under him. Coaching with the Gators eventually led to Mark and Sam Presti to cross paths and develop a relationship. With Presti visiting Florida to scout different players, Mark and others would almost exchange scouting info to pick Presti's brain and learn about the NBA. In 2014, Dagnall was hired as the head coach of the Thunder's G League affiliate, the OKC Blue, where he was the head man for five seasons. Eventually, Mark crossed paths with an old mentor of his as Billy Donovan became the Thunder's head coach in 2015, before Mark eventually moved up as Donovan's successor in 2020, where now Dagnall is looked at as one of the better coaches in the NBA. Number six, impactful rookie sixth men. The streak of great Kentucky guards translating the NBA has continued with Kaysen Wallace. In the draft, people talk about prospects as raw, a project, and more. Kaysen so far has been a ready-made NBA player coming to the league at only 19 years old. As the understudy for one of the NBA's best perimeter defenders in Lou Dort, Kaysen his rookie season is getting all-star and superstar assignments on a pretty consistent basis and holding his own in the process. Kaysen is not a one-way player either, shooting over 40% from three, flashes as a self-creator and growing playmaker who consistently set up his teammates. Before he was leading the Houston Rockets and an NBA MVP, James Harden got his start in OKC as a dynamic six-man for the Thunder. The baby version of the beard was a great change of pace to bring off the bench that complemented a young Russell Westbrook's breakneck speed and had a great two-man game dynamic with Nick Collison to carry the Thunder's units for chunks of games. Number five, efficient superstar number one options. There aren't too many scorers who can do the things that Kevin Durant does, let alone as consistently as efficiently as he does. In 2009-2010, KD made his first all-star team and finished the season second in MVP voting. KD averaged just over 30 points per game on silky shooting splits at 48, 37 from three, and 90 from the line, and terrorized the NBA as he led the Thunder to the playoffs for the first time and became the scoring leader for the entire league for the first time in his career. Fast forward to 2023-24, and Shea Gilgis Alexander's averages are eerily similar to what KD did in 09-10. Shea this season is averaging just over 30 points as well, along with 54, 37, 87 shooting splits. They score the ball in different ways, with more jump shots coming from the unguardable Durant. On the other side, SGA has become one of the more dominant paint presences as a guard, leading the league in drives each of the last three seasons. We could potentially have a past meets present matchup this year in the first round of the playoffs with the Thunder and Suns. As of today, on March 8th, the two teams are set to take each other on in the three versus six seed showdown where Durant and Shea would face off. Number four, elite charge takers. Coming out of Arkansas, Jalen Williams was a talented player who had a late first round to early second round range as a draft prospect, but the skill that most people associate with him in his game is taking charges. Since arriving in the NBA, J. Will has continued taking charges and putting his body on the line for the Thunder. In his rookie season, J. Will took 43 charges, which put him 10 charges ahead of the second place Kevin Love. J. Will did it in only 49 games. This season, he remains top five in the league in total charges taken as well. In 2009-10, Nick Collison really leaned into taking charges, coming second in the league with 57 charges taken, only trailing Jared Jeffries by two charges on the year. Collison was the original hustle player for the Thunder, happily doing the dirty work to support the Stars so they could do what they do best. Today, Collison is still a part of the Thunder organization, contributing as a special assistant to Sam Presti. Number three, high-level rookie rim protectors. Chet Holmgren this season has hit the ground running as a shot blocker and averaging 2.4 rejections per game as a rookie. 
Holmgren has totally transformed the Thunder's defense as a rim protector and last line of defense has helped the Thunder vault from a top 20 team in defensive rating last season to top 5 this year. Serge Ibaka aka Air Congo also quickly became a force in the paint in his first year playing in the NBA that other teams had to be aware of at all times. Despite not starting a single game in his rookie season, Serge Ibaka averaged 1.3 blocks per game which may seem light compared to Chet's 2.4 but if you factor in their minutes played with Serge at less than 20 minutes a night and Chet almost at 30, the per 36 puts them both roughly at over two and a half blocks per game. On a side note, Chet and Serge both also did not play in their first NBA seasons with Chet missing the year due to a foot injury and Serge playing one more season in Spain before he made the jump to the NBA. Number two, multiple rookie sophomore game participants. Over the course of NBA history, the rookie sophomore challenge has gone through many, many changes. The first ever game took place in 1994 with Team Sensation taking on Team Phenom. In 1995, the NBA scaled the extravagant names way back and went with Team Green versus Team White, which was more reminiscent of a high school practice scrimmage with reversible jerseys than something for the NBA's All-Star Weekend. Fast forward to 2010 and we settle in as the Rookie Sophomore Challenge. For Team Sophomore, Russell Westbrook got the call in an incredibly hot night with a young Brody scoring 40 points to lead all scores in the game. On the other side, a thin-bearded James Harden was on the rookie squad who eventually got the win despite Russ's great performance. This season, history repeated itself with a few players representing the Thunder for now what is called the Rising Stars Challenge. Chet Holmgren and Jalen Williams remained on the same team for All-Star Weekend, keeping their combined forces together for Team Jalen Rose and eventually won the entire tournament. On the other side, Kaysen Wallace was all alone as the only Thunder player on Team Pau Gasol, teaming up with Victor Wembanyama before falling to the G League player-only Team Detlef Shrimp. And coming in number one, Young Big Threes. In late 2000s, Sam Presti managed to catch lightning in a bottle having probably the greatest streak in professional sports history in terms of draft picks going from Kevin Durant in 2007, Russell Westbrook in 2008, and James Harden in 2009. All three players went on to become NBA MVPs, multiple-time All-Stars, All-NBA players, and automatic bids for the Basketball Hall of Fame whenever they decide to hang up their jerseys. Fast forward to today, and the Thunder have once again accumulated a core with elite talent and potential in the form of Shea Gilgis Alexander, Jalen Williams, and Chet Holmgren to carry the torch for the next generation of Oklahoma City Thunder basketball. KD, Russ, and Harden left an incredibly hard bar to clear, but there is optimism for this current core as they seem in early returns to have more skills that complement their co-stars more than their early OKC predecessors, along with an elite head coach, depth, and a treasure trove of draft assets heading forward. But how many of these similarities can you see between the 2009-2010 Thunder and OKC's current squad? Or did I miss any common threads? Let me know down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and talking thunder with me.